Hi, and welcome to another one of our helpful how-to sessions. In this session, I'm going to take you through using SAP Visual Intelligence with SAP Business One running on HANA. So SAP Visual Intelligence is the latest tool that's been released by SAP that gives you the ability to connect to your data, be it in a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet, be it sitting inside your SAP Business One database, basically any, uh, almost any data source that you want to uh, connect to, you can use SAP Visual Intelligence to go in and query that uh, and produce a visualization of that data. So how does it work? Very, very quickly, I'm going to uh, take the version that I've already installed on the SAP Business One uh, demo server. So I've launched the application. We're just waiting for it to connect to the demo server. And it's now connected and it's going to go ahead and launch SAP Visual Intelligence. So I get the splash screen. Now the reason why you'll see Business One sitting there in the background is I already had a uh, Business One session launched uh, sitting there off that demo server. So one of the great things about the way the demo server works is that it does utilize the same session wherever possible. So you can see I've got myself a 30 day version, 30 day trial version, the same one that I've pointed you to in the blog post. Uh, so all I have to do now is just say I wanna continue my trial and you'll see that the system is designed to make it as easy as possible for you to get going. There's links here where you can go and view the website for visual intelligence, some visual intelligence tutorials, and then of course there's links to the, the SAP visual intelligence community. There's also some samples here that you can use, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new document and show you how quick and easy it is just to pull, for example, uh, some sales analysis out of SAP Business One, and I'm gonna use one of my HANA databases. So I go in here and I choose New Document, and it's gonna ask me, where is my data source? So is it coming from a comma-separated value file? Uh, am I gonna do a freehand SQL query? Is it coming from uh, an offline HANA data store? Is it in a Microsoft Excel database or whatever? In my particular instance, I'm gonna say it's coming from a HANA online data store. So I'm gonna to connect to my HANA server, and if you've already uh, connected to a HANA server in the past, you'll see it, uh, the system stores the details of that here. So I'm gonna select that. You just put in basically the, the name of your HANA server, and then you pick the server instance that you wanna get that data from. So in my particular scenario, it's server instance 00. And then I'll also put in my username and my password. And I choose to connect to my HANA instance. So you'll see what it's basically doing is it's now connected to my HANA database. Now, because the user that I've selected here has access to every database, I can basically attach to any one of those databases that I want. Uh, and you see I've got a whole range of different ones uh, for every single country uh, localization of SAP Business One. So I'm gonna use my US data. Now, what you're seeing here is what we call the semantic layer that is delivered together with SAP Business One when we're running on HANA. So we've built these uh, analysis cubes, if you like, that make it very, very quick and easy for you to be able to go in and access the information. So I'm interested in looking at, uh, say, sales analysis. So uh, what do I need to do? All I wanna do is go and look at my sales revenue object here and I'll choose Acquire. And then you'll see the next thing that uh, Visual Intelligence is going to do, it's basically gonna open up a canvas where it's gonna allow me to start constructing my visualization of the data. So here it is, I'm basically ready to start working with my data. So you'll see over here on the left-hand side, I've got a couple of specific areas that I can go to. I can work with my measures, and measures are already defined in the semantic layer as the numbers that you can work with. I've then got my hierarchies. So these are, if you like, some of the values that I can use to narrow down the information that I'm looking at. And then further down, 
you'll see I have all these different attributes. Again, I'm able to, to use these to, to select the specific information that I, that I want to view and that I want to visualize. Across the top here, I have my additional tools that allow me to specify how do I want this data to be visualized? Do I want it to be visualized in a scatter graph? Do I want to use some data maps? Or do I just want to use things like bar graphs, line graphs, or whatever the case may be? So what am I interested in looking at? Well, I want to look at my um, sales amount. Now, one of the things that you can see here is when you hover over one of these measures, you get an additional option that you can click on, and that allows you to go ahead and add it to the current chart to make a new chart, display the format that it, that information's in, or you can even rename that uh, rename that particular measure. So in this case, I'm going to just go and I'm going to add it to my current chart. And you'll see by default, it started off with a bar chart. So there you go. There's my sales amount in local currency. Now that's great and it's there, it's quick and it's simple. And I can see I've done $3.663 million uh, worth of sales. But now I want to start uh, analyzing that a little bit better. So what do I want to do? Uh, what I can do now is I can decide to add um, some filtering. So let's say I want to look at that information by customer. All I need to do is I can click on customer and I can drag that across and put it on my x-axis as one of my dimensions. And now you're seeing that I'm looking at my sales by customer, but also it's detected that I'm able to look at my sales by customer group as well. So that's the advantage of the semantic layer is that it's adding all that information for you. Now what I can do is by simply clicking on one of these values, you'll see this option comes up here and I can choose to filter by that value or I can exclude that value. So it makes it very, very easy for me to, um, to narrow that down and start you know, slicing and dicing. Now if I want to as well, I can go up here and I want to make it a pie chart with a variable slice depth. So we'll give that a couple of seconds. Now, in order for this particular one to work, I actually have to add uh, a second measure. So maybe I want to add my gross profit. So I add this down to my measure. And so now you're seeing that I not only am I getting my sales at the top level, but I'm also getting to see my gross profit as well. So I can see for this customer, when I hover over the area of the chart, Aquant Systems, they were 409,000. They made up 11% of my total sales and the gross profit that I made on them was $222,000. So it makes it very, very easy for you to start presenting this information. So there's lots of different ways that you can filter uh, and you can start to represent that data. Then once you've got it, of course, you can go up here and you're able to share that information out. So if I click on share, I'm able to now export that data out as a file. I can publish it to SAP Streamwork if I want. I'm also able, uh, once I've done a little bit more work, to send the visualization out via email. All right, so it makes it incredibly quick and easy to not only create that information, but also to then, uh, to then share that out. So that's a quick look at a, a very, very basic uh, introduction to SAP Visual Intelligence. Again, I encourage you to go and download the software and try it for yourself with your own data.